One of the things I took away from Ben Franklin is how innovative he was. They kept inventing things like insurance plans and widows and orphans schemes, but also ways to do savings, penny savings banks. And I think that innovation uh, for savings has sort of decreased recently when we were talking to Kevin Hassett a minute ago. It is true 401ks can be portable, but so many people are in a gig economy. They're juggling many things. You should be able, Acorns is trying to do this, but other companies I think should try to do it as well, to say, I'm going to have a savings plan that maybe is actually based on my phone and I get to put pennies in. I get to earn points. I get to go to Starbucks. Savings go in. If I'm working in Uber. By the wayside, I yeah, know. and I do an Airbnb. I do Uber. I also do some task grab at work and I work on the side as a consultant. Uh, there's got to be better ways to save. And Ben Franklin was always looking. He was a network guy. He invents the postal system because he the believes in system. network. He lending library system. So he invents things that allow us to use networks and technology to increase wealth. He's a person, you know, a penny saved is a penny earned. That's Ben Franklin, poor Richard's almanac. So he believes in thrift, he believes in saving, but he also believes in finding new ways a new economy can help people save. You know, Walter, um, we've done a lot of stories here about the unbanked, the people who oh, yeah. don't have any access to banking. And mm. it got much worse after the, the Great Recession. Um, but it does strike me that technology has a lot of ways to kind of reach out to people that, that traditional banks maybe can't get to or just won't get to. You know, I wish technology would be as disruptive in this sector as it's been in my old sector, which is the media. <laughs> I mean, and I look around, I learned about this after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans. And there were a lot of kids who, you know, straggled back and their parents weren't, you know, it was a pretty messy time. And the one thing I realized is there are a lot of people who are unbanked, so they can't get a credit card. Without a credit card, you walk into a cell phone store and you decide you really want a cell phone a monthly plan, you can't do that. There's so many people who don't participate in the economy very well. So I invested in one company called Akimbo, which allows people to give credit cards and debit cards to other people. I can fill it up with money so that these kids who are unbanked at least can walk into a store and not have people try to shun them. Sorry, Andrew. Well, well, Walter, even, even for those who are banked, yeah. uh, uh, oftentimes they're investing in high fee products or yeah. products that are too risky. I mean, the evidence shows that if you save and you invest in low fee broad based products, you're going to be better off. I never learned any of that in school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through 12 years of schooling. What, what, can, we, what can we do, pardon me, six, 16 years of <laughs> what, can, what can we do to increase education of those very simple tenets? Yeah, well, I think you want financial literacy. And, um, you know, when I first worked at the Time Life Building, Jack Bogle had just started something, he came up. He, came up to our you know, editorial meeting. I said, what should I do? He said, look, if you want to spend a whole lot of time second guessing the market, you should do that. If not, a low fee index fund is for you. I think we need more literacy, but I'd still, if you don't mind, get back to Becky's point. The people who are underbanked or, the, or unbanked are really the problem. They're going to the payday loans places. It's not just that they're going to a high fee a mutual fund. Very quick savings question for you, because uh, your former magazine Time sure. wrote a big piece about it years ago, Australia, mm -hmm. and the model they have for savings, which is to say that they force every company right. in their 401k plans, the effective 401k plans, to put in, I think, 9, if not 12% by 2020 mm -hmm. uh, of your pay. It's a huge tax on the companies, but it's changed the dynamic in terms of retirement in the country. Right, and that's very interesting, but I think when you move to a new economy where people aren't joining corporations like that as much, that's harder to do. So you have to say, how can somebody who's trying to juggle a couple of jobs not just depend on employer-based health care, employer-based savings plans, employer-based retirement plans? How do we make these things more networked and portable?